ask you to lift up your hands to heaven and just wave your hands to the Lord. Wherever you are, just wave your hands to the Lord. No war like unto our God. Please lift up your hands and wave your hands to the Lord. There is no war like unto our God. No one unto our God, there is no like unto him. He is everlasting. He is omnipotent. He is the ancient of days. He is the Lord that reigns. He is the Lord that roots the fears of men. There is no like unto him. Oh, Minasi and God is the Lord of our all. We worship you, God. We exalt your name. precious name we have worship in Jesus precious name we have worship before you take your seat I'd like you to put your hands together for the Lord just to celebrate it put your hands together for the Lord yes Lord you can do better for the Lord for the Lord for the Lord you can do better you can do better for the Lord for the Lord God Almighty hallelujah praise the, praise the name of the Lord before you take your seats, I'd like to welcome you to God's presence, the second service this morning. I trust God that the uniqueness of God's presence will be made manifest in your life this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will not go back the same way you, you had entered. The uniqueness of the name of the Lord will be revealed to you and your life will be filled with the blessing that come from the presence of the Lord this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are welcome into God's presence. Make up your mind, open your heart to receive of what the Lord has ordained for, for, for you here to, today. And I tell you, you will go out with testimony here this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. As you take, take your seat, we welcome the, the new one as the minister to us this morning.
Hallelujah. Shall put our hands together for Jesus one more time. For Jesus, for Jesus, for Jesus. Shall we celebrate Jesus in the house this morning? Amen. Please, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. One more time, help me to put your hands together for the new wine and the musicians. Shall we put our hands together for them? Let's appreciate them and celebrate them. Hallelujah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome into the presence of the living God. Um, in the first service, we received uh, as guest and as guest minister, Reverend Joey Banugo, who is a relationship expert of long standing in the city and um, who also is a dear friend. And um, like I. In introducing him, I also brought to attention that he was actually our best man on our wedding ceremony, which is exactly, I mean, which held exactly 24 years ago. Tomorrow, 2nd of November, we make 24 years of our marriage to my dear wife, my marriage to my dear wife, beautiful. And we thank God who has helped us every inch of this journey. We didn't plan the conference because of uh, anniversary those of you who are members of the church will know I've never done that um, it was just purely co coincidental I was thinking this year's um, family life conference can we bring in a guest and in that period of thought around August September I went to minister in a, another dear friend's church a mutual friend of ours that is he's my friend he's also Reverend Joe's friend um, Pastor Esa Ogori, Fulfilling World Foundation, we actually served together and we became close friends from that time. And then, um, so when I got there and I saw, oh, they're having a conference and then also a relationship um, um, seminar, and then it just clicked in my heart that, oh, we need to bring Reverend Joe. We've not brought him to church in a long while. I think the men brought him last year or two years ago, but not to. That was an outreach or special program they had in an hotel on Stadium Road, but we've not received Reverend Joe in this house, not in the last 10 years, to my, um, if my memory serves me well. So that clicked it then, so we fixed the date and then we said, okay, um, um, the date for last Sunday, I think that was October 25, 26, so it was supposed to be with us, or is that 24, 25, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday for the youth to just rub minds with them and share with them concerning relationship and then on Sunday I was supposed to take the two services um, in our kingdom life service I mean kingdom life services on Sunday so then the coffee came up and then restriction was I mean uh, movement was restricted and then we adjusted the services from actual to virtual and then I had to plead with him he's quite busy now so I had to plead with him if he could reschedule for us for the following Sunday, which is, I mean, the following weekend, which is this weekend. And then he said, oh, he had already committed himself, but he would try to take the Saturday and then the first service on Sunday, which he did very graciously. 
and very powerfully. Those of us who are here, uh, the young people um, who are here yesterday evening, I'm sure are tremendously blessed. I was blessed um, by his ministry yesterday and also in the first service this morning. So this, even now, he couldn't wait till the end of the first service. He had to be preaching in another church in the city. And then from there, he's going on to Bielsa State also to minister. Praise the Lord. So, um, but you can still benefit from his ministry. He has this beautiful book, Get Married in 12 Months. Um, for those of us who are here to be married, and uh, we just have a few copies of this. Um, 31 Common Assumptions Exposed, 31 Answers to Critical Questions Provided, and 24 Powerful Pointers to Your Potential Spouse. So this material is good for those of us planning to be married, trusting for a life partner, already in courtship. You can get a copy of this, and I'm sure it's what you can digest in just about one day. A copy goes for 1,000 Naira, so you can um, take a quick advantage of this while stock lasts. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Right, so in the month of October, we spent some time, probably, I mean, really not all the time, but we spent some time to look into issues with regard to um, fam family life. And then, um, I'm sure we've been blessed. Sometimes we, when we are used to the same environment, we feel, oh, I know that. Oh, pastor talks like that. Oh, I know a pastor will deal with that. And then sometimes we don't really hear what we ought to hear. And so I encourage us, if you're not on the platform, for example, um, listen to Pastor Tunji, hashtag listen to Pastor Tunji. I encourage you to be on that platform. It will benefit you. You can get our messages on that platform once it's preached. Before the day is over, you are likely to be able to get a copy of the message I preach, especially in this house, on that platform. It's a WhatsApp platform, and it has been in existence for a, couple, um, for a number of years. So you can get our messages um, if you um, join that platform. All right. Are you in the house this morning? So this morning I want to continue on uh, uh, an issue I started to address from last week, and I want to try to cap it up today. I'll call this one family support structure. Family support structure. Let us turn in our Bibles this morning to Psalm 127. I want to read the whole psalm. Psalm 127. I want to read the whole psalm from verse 1 to verse 5. Are you there in Psalm 127? If you are there, say amen. amen. All right, so we're still waiting for some people. If you are hoping to get it on the TV screen, you might be disappointed. So make sure you have your copy of your Bible, maybe a hard copy form, soft copy form, and open to it. Psalm 127, and I'm waiting for you. Are you there? Beautiful. The response is more now. Psalm 127, I'd like to read from verse 1 to verse 5. I read from the New King James Version of the Bible. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so, he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage, not uh, all the heritage of the Lord in children, but a part of the heritage of the Lord, a part of the things we can inherit from the Lord. Children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Sorry, excuse me, while the cooling system shut down. Yeah, because um, it seems to be getting hot now. All right, so he said, Behold, children are inherited from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. 
Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Family support structure. Father, we thank you for your presence this morning. It's always a privilege to relate to you. It's a privilege to come boldly before your throne of grace, to obtain mercy, and to find grace to help in time of need. We thank you for bringing us from all walks of life, those of us here present physically, and those who are connecting with us on live streaming platforms. We thank you for the privilege we have to connect with you, to be discipled by you, to glean wisdom from your throne, and to be impacted with grace in your presence. And Lord, we ask of you this morning, as we, the eyes of the maidens look to the hands of their mistresses, and the eyes of the, mas- uh, the servants look to the hands of their masters, so also do we look to you, until you will come and have mercy on us, and show us your mercy, and favor us, and bless us indeed. We thank you for answered prayers, because we are prayed in Jesus' name. I like us to understand again that we all need support irrespective of the temperament type irrespective of the level of status and um, fame or notoriety as the case may be we all need we were created to be supported and that's why the living God will not have us to operate alone to operate in isolation or to uh, operate in a utopia let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion and so the dominion mandate and the dominion possibility is as a byproduct of sustained support from God if you will have dominion as God has ordained it on earth it is a byproduct of sustained support, sustained connection, sustained relationship with God. And so God, for various spheres of life, he has made it to be that human beings will need support. And having said that also, the society in which we live, no man can run through life. You see any man who has made it in any sphere, anyone who is excelling in any area, the, such a person, such a woman, such a man is a product of one form of support system or the other. Education is a form of support system. <laughs> Clothing adorned with garments is a form of support system. And, uh, recently uh, uh, in what they call temperate regions the weather is changing so no matter how much you don't like clothes you don't like to be adorned you cannot survive the harshness of the tropics in winter in the fall and more so in winter so you see even wearing clothes wearing decent clothes wearing appropriate clothes is a form of support system. A lady who is well endowed, a lady who has come to maturity, who will not engage the appropriate support system of the garments will give a false opinion or sometimes a beautiful, attractive, is also well adorned, well clothed. You are giving to yourself a level of support system. So I'm showing us fundamentally, foundationally, in every area of our education is a form of support system. Uh, um, Adornment is a form of support system. Transportation is a form of support system. Using the phone is a form of support system. So if we are wired as human beings, those spirit beings, and so we connect with God and the realm of the spirit with our spiritual dimension, but because we also live in this mortal body, we have emotions. We have a physical um, adornment. So you will see that in those various dimensions of man, man needs support. 
Man needs spiritual support, so he needs to depend on God. Man needs social support, so he needs education. He needs health care. He needs transportation. He needs infrastructure in the society to be pre- protected from the elements and the harshness of the elements sometimes. So we need support systems in various areas of our lives. I'd like you to turn someone close to you this morning and say, in case you have not been aware, you need support systems. Turn to someone close to you, either to your left or to your right, and tell that person with affirmation, you need support system if you make the most of your life. Hallelujah. But having said that, there is a very critical support system from the family unit. So a man does not just land from the sky. God has the power. He spoke. The stars came into being. He spoke. The the dry land appeared. He spoke, the animals um, came out of the, of the earth. He spoke, the fish and the birds, they sprang out of the waters. When it came to man, he produced for man on two levels. He spoke to himself for the spiritual dimension and then also he spoke to the soul system to give a physical garment to a man who will live on the earth. And so you'll see, after the first man had been produced, and then the woman alongside with him, you will see that family originated from the union of a man and a woman. And then they give back to a baby. Who needs? You see, most societies, it is expected that you don't leave your parents' control, your parents' instruction. You are not regarded as an adult until you are about 18 years of age. You are not eligible to vote. You are not eligible to carry a driver's license. You are not eligible to be regarded as an adult in most societies until you are about 18 years old. And that immediately begins to place distinction between man and the primate family where in some quarters there is the opinion that man evolved from the primate family, from the apes from the orangutans and the gorillas and the monkeys and all that because for those ones they don't need up to 18 years to be regarded as adults i have one of my younger brothers who is breeding a dog and the dog is massive quite big south african mastiff just about one year old one year one month and then they tell me that the dog is still a puppy i said this one with the voice I hear in the morning when it barks, he said, it is still a puppy. It is still a puppy. He said, by the time it is 18 months old, it will have grown fully. I said, this one. <laughs> and don't let me tell you what my wife feels about the dog. <laughs> All right. So now look at it for animals, months, maybe two years, three years, and then they are regarded as full grown. Then they can have their territory. For human beings, 18 years times 12 months why because not just in the physical development but also in the social development in the moral development in spiritual consciousness the 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 child needs to be trained the child needs to be equipped the child needs to be supported provided for cared for that's why the bible says in proverbs in chapter 22 and verse 6 Train up, train up, train up, train up a child the way he should go. And when he grows up or she grows up, he will not depart or she will not depart from it. So train up. And I check the root meaning of that train up. It is to instruct. It is to guide. It is to cover. It is to disciple. And also sometimes where required, it is to discipline. So he said, train up a child. You want a child to come to stature. You want from your family, because we are talking about support system, you want from your family that a child becomes an asset in the society and the child, that child is celebrated in the society and becomes the pride of the family. There must be a training. There must be a support system. A giving back to a child is the beginning of a support system. It's not the terminal point for a support system. 
So it's not enough for you to think you've had a child. I shared with us some weeks ago, a lady I pastored. This was about 20, 22 years ago. I pastored not in this church. The church is not that old. This church is not that old. And so I pastored this lady. And so I noticed in the space of about four years, she gave back to three children and there were no triplets and there were no twins. So I had to ask after the third or the fourth one with rapidity that what is happening here? What is your target? What is your goal? What is your purpose? She said, ah, pastor, I want to churn out these children. I want to release these children so that I can be free to take care of myself and enjoy my life so that my husband can take care of them, send them to school, buy clothes for them, um, provide food for them. I said, no, it is not really like that. Training up a child is a family responsibility. A woman may give back to the child but actually in most African cultures, it is believed that the community trains the child. And so here we're looking at support systems. We've looked at vital support systems. Ultimately, every human being will need God as a support system. And that's why you see from the beginning of our text this morning, Psalm 127, except the Lord builds, except the Lord watches, unless the Lord builds, unless the Lord... So, in every sphere of human activity it will be wisdom to factor god to acknowledge god to bring in god that is why you see in another psalm he said the fool says in his heart it is not necessarily that the fool does not go to church psalm 14 psalm 53 the fool says in his heart that there is no god why because the fool feels i may go to church they may make me deacon they may make me pastor they may make me chief financier they may make me deputy general of year. but i don't think with this level of money that i have i don't think i need god's impute into my business into my life i can order my life i can do my own things i can guide myself i can give myself instructions i can read motivational books i can read seven keys to success eight steps to break through so the fool says that is in the lifestyle in the decision making process there is no god but here wisdom is teaching us from this psalm 127 unless god is involved other people may make the effort the teaching system educational system may make the effort you may send your children to the best schools in the world you may send um, send your children to the best locations of the earth for vacation but if god is not involved in the support system it will add up to vanity in vain so we established that especially from a week ago god must be the principal support system in every home god must be the principal support system in every family god must be the principal support system in every society the infrastructures are not enough the road networks are not enough the the, the health care is not enough the people may be relevant intellectually socially but every human being must also be relevant for eternity and so he says unless god is involved so you see the case with jericho it appeared beautiful it appeared well constructed everything looked seamless in order organization perfect administration perfect government perfect but he said the life into the city the water that brings life is nothing and the land is barren so we show us here god as a principal support system everyone who will be involved in family everyone who will pioneer family everyone who will be a stakeholder in family must factor god a relationship with god is not religion factoring god is not religion of any shade including christian religion it is that a relationship is intentionally developed to bring god as a principal stakeholder principal support system for the family and then we dealt with the man as the family head under god as the priest like pastor the reverend joe addressed that in the first service we dealt about the woman who though no matter the status no matter the age the woman must recognize that she is a helper a supporter to provide support system a wife in the marriage setting a woman married to a man is not initiator is not leader it is not the divine pattern she's helper comparable to she's supporter i mean in that relationship but my concern quickly here this morning is for the children 
Because every child is an arrow in the hands of God. Every child is an arrow in the hands of God. A weapon with which to do exploits. A weapon, an instrument of war with which to take territories. He said, happy is the man who has his quiver where the arrows are stockpiled like, um, like, like weapons stored up to be used at the right time. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be afraid. He shall not be intimidated. He shall speak with the enemy at the gates. Do you know the meaning of gates in that context? Here is talk, when they talk about gates, gates is a point of access into a territory. A point of access. You want to come to my house? We have a street gate and then we have a house gate. In many communities in Paracot, you have street gates and then you have house gates. So you want to come to my section of the city, you will have the street gate. So through the gates, you gain access. Through the gates, you go out. Through the gates, you come in. Likewise, when he said, a man who is armed with children as arrows, he will possess. Some transitions talk about possessing the gates of the enemies. Some transitions talk about they speak with the enemy at the gates. The gates there, it may be an economic gate. It may be healthcare gate. It may be legal system gate. It may be financial gate. It may be marital gate. He sent these children, they are arrows in the hands of God. And the man who has them as arrows, as arrows, as arrows. I like to emphasize that. He says such a man will be able to take territories. Because when your children, they grow, they are groomed, they are trained up, and they go into the common sector of society, they, are, they become city takers. They become gatekeepers in that field. And you raise your children, you train your children, they are God-fearing, they are God-fearing their ways, they become, maybe one becomes a lawyer, then through legal prowess, a gate is secured. Through legal prowess, a gate is possessed. And then the man may be a, an illiterate or semi-illiterate, but through this child doctor, this child engineer, this child entertainer, this child comedian, and through the exploits they are doing in their fields, they are extending the territories of the man's influence. Are you still in here this morning? But those things will not just happen. Children have to be trained up. You want to be involved in the family, um, family system? You have to recognize the responsibility that comes with the family unit. Being a member of a family is not just fun. It's not just marrying a woman. It's not just going on honeymoon. It comes with responsibility. Turn someone close to you and say, family life is responsibility. Big responsibility. You better be ready for responsibility. Turn someone close to you and preach to a gospel to someone there. You better be ready for responsibility. All right. So we need to recognize here the importance of providing support system for the family members. For the children the man plays his part under god the woman plays her part but then the children they have their roles and they have to be cared for let me say some of these things here in training up a child and providing support system for the child recognize first of all those children should grow with an increasing sense of responsibility for their roles in the family don't raise your children to feel like they should be irresponsible. They should not be responsible. They can begin to be responsible for their underwear. They can begin to be responsible for the plates they eat with. They can begin to be responsible for the meals that will be cooked in the house. They can begin to be responsible for their own breakfast or lunch or dinner. They can begin to be responsible for some little errands in the house. Maybe in your room, you need to get something in the sitting room. It is not laziness to send your children on errand. You are giving them a sense of responsibility. That they are in the house, you are providing for them, but they must also be responsible for certain things in the house. Are you still in here this morning? Don't, I remember growing up, my parents had a house help. This was around, I was around eight, nine. One day my mom called me and my younger brother I can't, I, I can't remember if the youngest one was in the picture I think he was he must have been a baby my mom said listen this house help that I have is not yours it's not for you don't send her on errands don't give her clothes to wash 
I employed her for myself and your dad. So you must be responsible. You take your place to the kitchen. I was just about eight or at the most nine years of age. You take your place to the kitchen. In kitchen, wash them. Clean them up. And take your clothes to their proper places. Tidy the room after you. Make sure things... And you, dear my mom, very gifted with fivefold ministry. You dare not cross the line. I remember this was, I was not doing my A level, so I must have been around 16 years of age or 16, 17. And then she told me the first time in history, I told her I want to go for the end of year party in my school. And then she said, You must be home by maybe 9 p.m. or something. And of course, by 7 p.m., I advised myself, but we're living in Liberty Road in Ibadan. And then I was schooling in International School, University of Ibadan. By 7, 7 30, when the party was just starting, I advised myself, it's time to go home now. <laughs> My friends had their vehicles, so, but I had to take public transport. I got home some minutes past nine, knocked the door. She opened the door for me. As I went the Yoruba way to greet my mom, she just said, Stoop down there. And some of you children, you don't even know the meaning of stoop down. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You will stoop down until whatever you produce from your nostrils and the tears from your eyes form a map, maybe the map of love or map of hatred. And she was smart enough because I will read her movement. Once this one is getting painful, once I see she goes towards the kitchen, I go this way. When she's coming back, I go back. Because if you, are, you change from left to right, what was meant to be one hour may become two hours. I think she eventually released me from that past nine around to 11 from stooping down. And sometimes it comes with beating. Now it looked like military barracks it looked like um, what, what they call the military drill now when soldiers they want to grill you tell you do this do that forgotten the time now it looked like that but I think it helped me to become a better person in adult life the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 there's no chastening or training or discipline for the now that seems joyous but rather grievous he said but afterwards it produces the fruits of righteousness can someone relate to what I'm talking about here this morning so in giving children a support system we need that they should grow with an increasing sense of responsibility for their roles in the family secondly here no child should be raised to feel redundant or raise any child to make that child feel useless hopeless you are good for nothing you are going nowhere these words are powerful you may feel, oh, but they're not Christians. But they are still responded to in the realm of the spirit. Either by good angels or bad angels. And I don't want to go into those details. So you don't, at most, mute yourself. But if you will have to speak, don't make your children feel hopeless, useless, redundant, amounting to nothing. Going nowhere to help them to happen. Make sure that no child is raised to feel redundant, unneeded, and without abilities. On a third level, every child should be made to realize increasingly that with ability comes responsibility. It's part of the training process. It's part of the, to make an, I mean, to make an arrow, what goes into it? So when the psalmist said, as arrows are, in the hands of a warrior a warrior is not just the muscle it's not just the height a warrior is trained a warrior is trained for battle a warrior is giving equipment that are taken through process so likewise as a father as a mother if your children will do exploits out there bring you good news you hear great things about them on television on radio on social media platform then from now begin to train those children and it is never too late if they are still under your watch if they are still under your influence make sure you train up somebody said train up somebody said train up somebody said train up friends don't leave the training of your children don't plan to leave the training of your children to society to the school system they play their part but the parents from the family support system have vital roles to play. Hallelujah. I also like to say this on a fourth level in training up a child. 
the child should be invested in invest in your child build up your child with the help of god build up your child build up your words build up those young people under your watch it, to become assets and not liabilities in life we look at our society today so much has come out of our society and several things happened in the last few weeks in our nation young people came together and decided that enough of keeping quiet enough of staying mute we need to put government to task they have harassed some of the police have harassed some of us abused some of us and we need to put a stop to it and use that opportunity to correct certain ills in the society powerful initiative wonderful initiative they had my full support they had my prayer support and they did that and the whole scale of the nation for about 12 days and then we all know what happened there were shooting incidents in lagos and apart from the shooting incidents across several other hot spots police officials serving the nation with their lives with their skills with their resources they were attacked some were assaulted some were burnt alive some were killed through the worst imaginable means i know as a result of that the police withdrew and then the protesters young people were replaced by looters criminally minded people in the name of what we are taking is us on and i said yesterday until it is given to you it is not yours there is a tradition i think we've been part of that tradition sometimes sometimes ago we used to spend a lot of christmas abroad and then you see we buy gifts for one another and with the people's names on it and wrapped and we put all those things i'm sure some families still do those things and then you have the family i mean christmas tree and then you put those gifts the children may go and admire the size of the gifts the name on the gifts do i have any gift with my name on it but you don't unwrap until christmas day and sometimes boxing day when you are giving those things and so we have and we had in our society one group of youths and young people reasonable orderly not giving to violence doing what is right to rescue the whole nation and then this other group came in they were looting they were killing they were destroying both categories of people came from families and when these things started to happen even before the looting i asked my son on the phone i said will you if you have been within this environment will you have been involved in this exercise of this protest i said yes that even now i'm on social media tweeting this tweeting that said no you must end this you must stop that i said okay now with this curfew that just came up we used to be involved ah, he said daddy I, I will come home <laughs> i said even i have negotiated with you i have allowed you to go be involved participate be a voice for the whole 200 million pop um, population nation but at the point of government saying don't go beyond this boundary I think, in fact, one of the leaders of the, the, the protest, the moment the government of Lagos State said there is a curfew, he tweeted immediately, as soon as the curfew is lifted, we go back to protesting. In an environment where there's so much history of violence and killings and no value to lives and property, I believe there must be wise balance between activism, speaking on behalf of the society, and knowing that you are not in a utopia you are not in a perfect society that recognizes and respects the rule of law we have people in our society who have been in activism for 60 years 70 years 80 years and they are still involved why because even jesus knew when to go to the forefront of battle jesus knew when to withdraw jesus knew when to escape but my concern here this morning is both categories came from families one family for the ones who have who handled the protest well in the face of provocation they were not violent i feel probably they were well trained they were well brought up they were well exposed they went through proper support system for the other ones two things could have happened to the looters either they were well brought up and they abandoned the training or they were never well brought up are you still in here this morning are you still in here this morning I'll be done in a moment. So I'm challenging us here this morning. We must provide 
support system for these young people if they will represent us well if they will extend the frontiers of our um, influence if there will be weapons an arrow is not a decorative tool or decorative instrument it's a weapon of war it's for going to the battlefront it's for seizing gates it's for possessing territories the arrow of your child may be his medical education, his legal education, his ICT education, his a social media influencer, but the arrow must be polished. The arrow must be worked on. The arrow must be equipped. The arrow, if you use a bent arrow, if you shoot it this way, it may end up on this target. So the arrow must be processed. The arrow must be straightened. The arrow must have the arrowhead. The arrow must have the shaft, the length of the woodwork or the metal work as the case may be. The arrow must have the base that gives it weight to travel accurately and hit the target. I need to close with this here. There are things we need to do in training of these children. There are things we need to factor into their building. And number one here I like to say what I call spiritual consciousness. Every child, every teenager, every youngster, before that child comes to full maturity, the investment must be made for the children to be spiritually conscious. That though you are tall, though you are pretty as a lady, though you are cute looking and attractive, that is not all there is about your life. There is an inner dimension of your life. The Bible says, though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. Let us teach our family members. Let us provide a support system for them where they are able to anchor their own lives on God. We can show them the Lord, but they have to develop their own relationship with God. Are you in here this morning? All right. So, things to build into every child, spiritual consciousness. A consciousness that life is not just what appears. A consciousness that what is seen is influenced by what is not seen. A consciousness that though I live in this mortal body, my life is for eternity. Timeless, endless, perpetual. Also, we need to build into these children what I call environmental awareness. An awareness of the environment. How the environment works. That everywhere is not just space that you feel free to run into. That there are boundaries to every liberty. That there are limitations to every liberty. Environmental awareness. That other people are human beings. They may be on a lower social level, but they are human beings just like us. Sometimes you see some of these little children, when they see children like them begging on the streets, and then the coziness of their parents' car, they quickly wind up. They speak despicably of some of those people on the road. I remember I was listening to a pastor sometimes. He said one day he was with his child and they were driving. And the child, a, a, a beggar, a little girl beggar came and was begging. And his child drove the, get away, get away you dirty. He said he was, he flew into a rage. How dare you get out of the car? You are trekking home. Do you know where that, um, that, um, what that child can become? Do you know whether he, he can even be, she can be far better than you in the future? But what I'm trying to say here is we should never allow the children we raise, the people who are raised in our families, to have any sense of superiority to other people should value others they may come from privileged backgrounds they may have privileged social backgrounds but never raise your child to feel superior to other children who don't have as much privileges as they have are you in here this morning so that is part of the environmental awareness that other people are human beings they may be living in a bachelor. They may be living in a nile, black nylon with woodwork on the edges to hold it together. And that is where they run into. No lights, no generator, nothing. And they spend the first 15, 20 years of their life. They are human beings just like us. Made in the image of God. Made in the likeness of God. And we need to get the children to value that. Environmental awareness of human beings. Of what I call relational knowledge. Quickly. My time is fast spent. What well, things we need to build into every child, train into the children. What I call moral training. Some of the looting of warehouses, destroying people's houses to have access to what has not been labeled as ours, are products of this many a times of dysfunctional families. Young people coming from nowhere 
accountable to nobody nobody can check them nobody can say you are wrong there nobody can say stop there you don't have a right to go into those places moral training issues about truth speaking the truth standing for the truth even if it will cost you pain we need to train these children we need to train these teenagers if you have we have such children around us that no matter what truth always every demonstration of truth is a demonstration of the nature of god every demonstration of falsehood is a demonstration of the father of lies and he has a place in eternal damnation I don't think any parent in this house, I don't think any leader in this house who has a family involved with a family wants to raise children who will be damned for eternity. But if we don't check these little things, it can become a big monster in the end. I remember one of my dear pastor friends, he said something like this. He said the serpent that was just a snake in Genesis that was not dealt with summarily and allowed to grow became a dragon in the book of revelation when he said that i said wow i never thought of that before but that's amazing and that's true he said the serpent which was just a snake in genesis that was allowed to survive and live through that place by the time you see it in revelation he said i have become the great dragon what am i saying to us here moral training let us train our family members on issues like truth issues like respect respect for authority respect for civil authority respect for laws and regulations that also two wrongs don't make a right if you have been abused by a police officer before it is wrong for you now to think this is my payback time i will kill a human being who is sacrificing his or life to enforce law in our nation it is wrong no matter the motive no matter the mind for human beings to take the lives of human beings not to talk of law enforcement agents that represent the leadership of the nation so respect for authority respect for figures for adults respect for parents respect for leaders don't speak evil of leaders in the presence of your children i remember this one comes to mind one of my young people was talking to me sometimes he said you know we're in traffic and we're just there on the same spot for like an hour or two he said ah that is like you don't know how to drive like my daddy my daddy wants there's this kind of traffic he will just come out he's a very smart man and drive against traffic this one we are we have not moved from here to that door in two hours by now we are home in Obibo. we are home my daddy very smart man he seems smart to the child but within a civil society, such a daddy is teaching the child recklessness. No regard for public space. No regard for others. It's all about me and me and I and me and myself alone. That is the message being communicated. But in the little space of their family, it's like my dad is a smart man. But in the big space of society, that is a lawbreaker. Raising fellow lawbreakers from generation to generation somebody say god forbid i know we don't have some people in this house we are very law abiding i know i'm just speaking to people on live streaming are you still in here this morning <laughs> all right so respect for adults for parents for leaders for teachers they may earn the least wages but they imparted to us knowledge they showed us certain things right let us not disregard primary school teachers, secondary school teachers. They may not even be paid minimum wage, but they showed us the way. They trained us the way to go, and we are becoming better off in life. Have regard for institute. I mean, people who represent authority in our lives and in our space. Lastly, here this morning, well overshot my time this morning, but bear with me this morning things we need to build into every child every member of our family the things that enable for destiny every human being has a unique destiny for some it may be similar but every one of us has a unique destiny so we need in training these children to become arrows in the hands of god we need to prepare them 
and equip them with resources that will help them along destiny's path. Some of these children have unique gifts. Some of these children have unique skills. Some of these children have unique abilities. Some of these children have unique talents. Don't juxtapose. Don't impose. Don't say because this child is turning out this way, you also must turn out that way. One child should not be made another child's template. Good values, respect, truth, sincerity, beautiful. But there is a uniqueness of every child's destiny. A child may be called to be a singer. A child may be called to be a, become a comedian. It's not everyone who will become governor. Do you know in Nigeria, we have people who in the last 30, 40 years believe they will be president of this nation. But over any space of time, you will have only one president per time. So you have someone like Obama, by the time he was 52, 53, he had finished as president. Someone like the, the one that replaced him, at the age of 70, he was not even close to president. So let us not use one person's template for everybody. There is a uniqueness to every one of us. So that is still why we have to train. Don't say the firstborn is like this. All of you should be like the firstborn. No, sir. No, man. There is a unique template. There is a unique program. There is a unique destiny. It is your responsibility as parents to partner with God to discover the purpose. God said, I have two nations in your womb. And he didn't say they are the same. They are born at the same time, but their destinies were diametrically opposite. I need to close here. I'm challenging us here this morning. We need to provide support system. If we are going to get it right in the society, the new Nigeria of our dreams, a Nigeria that can compete with China, with Russia, with Germany, the United States of America, let us make up our minds to begin to contribute into that space from this space. Into that space of society, the Nigerian society, from this space of your family unit and my family unit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hands of a mighty man. One translation says, in the hands of a warrior. In the hands of a warrior. So when you think of your role to those children, when you think of the function of those children, see that each of those children, they will be going to war. Life is warfare. Destiny is warfare. And you don't want your children to be victims. You want them to be victors. Can I have an amen? amen. So invest in them. Train them. Build them. Mold them. Correct them. Rebuild them. Put them in order. Give them boundaries even within their freedom of expression. And the Lord will help us to raise great families, impactful families, beautiful families, the admiration of the community, the admiration of society, in the mighty name of Jesus. But it starts with everyone in every family taking responsibility. Children, take responsibility for your space in the family. Parents, Take responsibility for your roles in the family. And as we do those little things, it will contribute to precious building blocks for a bigger, better, desirable society. Shall we take a bow this morning? I'd like you to think about your life. Maybe you're a young person planning to have a family, raise a family. Maybe you look at some things about your parents' family and you feel, no, I will not do this. I looked at my own parents' family and I felt, no, there are certain things I will not do. If God will give me my own family, even if it will be at great cost, there are certain things I will not do. And God has helped me. Maybe you're a family person already. Are you doing things right? Are you providing the appropriate support system? Are you also taking adv advantage of the proper support system? That your parents is a massive support system. My dad lost his own dad at three years and five months. So that you have 
parents, mom and dad alive as a young person, you can't imagine the assets you have been loaded with. My dad was born into wealth, but the dad died young and everything was frittered away. He had to hawk on the streets. He had to hawk bean cake for survival. And by the grace of God, he became what he became. So if you have parents, you have people to support you. Don't disdain them. Don't deride them. Don't speak down on them. I read of one woman who was talking of a politician in Lagos, talking of young people always on drugs. And then I learned that she herself beat up her dad. <laughs> she had no moral business to even talk about youth. So think about your role in the family as a child. As a teenager, as a young person, as a parent. Are you doing it right? Are you building? Are you training? The people in your care, are you turning them into arrows? Weapons of war in the hands of God. By which you can take the gates of the enemy. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for families represented in this house this morning. And on live streaming. Well, thank you, Father, because the cities are waiting, the society is waiting, and nations are waiting for products, good products, not damaged products, good products of good families. And Lord, we pray for the grace, we pray for the pattern, heavenly pattern, we pray for a heavenly purpose, we pray for the wisdom to raise arrows out of our homes into your hands by which we can possess the gates of the enemy. There are gates in our nation to be possessed. The gates of the economy, gates of infrastructure, gates of transportation, gates of uh, uh, commerce, gates of politics, gates of regulations and government and governance. Lord, help us to raise good products out of our families. Help us to be good products and good ambassadors of yours and our families. That we may be good brands for you in the society. Where we have missed it, where we have abandoned our responsibilities, Lord have mercy on us. Help us to retrace our steps. Show us mercy. Help us to get it right in the mighty name of Jesus. Jacob started out by raising a bunch of rascals in his house. He himself being a rascal father, but he turned it around. He became a prince. His children became mighty in the land. Formidable nation of Israel. Wherever we have missed it in this house, in our families, help us to get it right. Let the products of our families become arrows in your hands by which we can possess the gates of of the enemy we receive grace this morning we receive wisdom this morning we receive heaven's blueprint this morning and we thank you because we are prayed in jesus name amen. and the people say amen. amen and also as we receive the holy communion this morning i like you to believe god for your family if you're a young person believing god for your family a life partner uh, um godly home i'd like you to believe god that as you partake of the body of jesus and of his blood this morning god will transmit to you life transfer to you heaven's pattern transfer to you grace to be able to raise a family that will bring joy and gladness to the heavenly father's heart if you're already a family man family woman you're already having children i'd like you to believe god as we partake of this communion this morning the heavenly pattern will be transmitted, translated into your family environment to bring about transformation in that family. Let us believe God together as we partake of this Holy Communion. I'd like the pastors to join with me. We dedicate these communion items that they be served and used for your glory as we partake of it. Let it transmit your life. Let it establish your covenant in our lives. And by which we are able to reign in life through Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, because we pray in Jesus' name. Sorry, excuse me.
please help to share. If you will be receiving of the Holy Communion, we'd like you to stand to your feet in honor of the Lord as we partake of his body and his blood. If you will be receiving of the Holy Communion, we'd like you to stand to your feet in honor of the Lord Jesus and in honor of his sacrifice. Only Christians, only those who have received Jesus as Lord can partake of his body. If you are not a part of the body of Christ, you do not qualify to partake of his body. Take of the communion ignorantly. He said that is why some people eat to themselves damnation and they die. King James garnishes the grammar. He said they sleep, but it actually means they die for eating the body of the Lord ignorantly. So the body of the Lord is for those who are members of the body of Christ who have received Jesus as Lord and repented of their sins and as we receive of this body this morning we're not just receiving for family i'd like you to also believe god for healing for your body as he is the bible says so are we in this world so as we partake of his body if you have ailment you have an ailment you have an infirmity in your body i'd like you to believe god that partaking of his body will transmit healing he said is there no balm in gilead is there no physician there as we partake of this communion trust god for divine order to come into your family divine enabling to come upon your family divine favor to surround your family divine wisdom to be operational in your family Do we have people on the gallery who want to partake of the communion? All right, please help us. Maybe one of the leaders will help to go up, up the gallery. We have if, a number of people there as well. While we wait so that we can all partake together, I'd like you to call on God that he will walk his work in your life. He will bring his pattern into your home. He will bring his power into your family. No matter what is going on on earth, some nations are going on the second wave and on a second national lockdown. Pray for yourself and your family where men are cast down. You will say there is lifting up that God will distinguish you among the nations because you know him. Because you are acquainted with him. Because you received the word from his mouth. Pray that he will distinguish you. Distinguish your family exempt you from harm exempt you from affliction exempt you from economic harm physical harm spiritual harm is there anybody who wants to receive of the communion who is yet to receive can i see your hand lifted your hand your arm raised <laughs> peniel don't worry your time will come all right let us receive of his body together. Let us receive of his blood together. Father, as we partake of your, the body of your son and the blood of your son this afternoon, we ask for your life to be transmitted. We ask that your grace be transmitted. We ask that these words will not return to you empty. We ask that these words will go to perform that which you please in our homes, in our families, in everything we represent for your glory. We break the shackle of worldly limitations. We break the power of infirmities. We break the grip of the system of the world trying to hold sway in our family and our family values. Transmit conviction of divine things into our family members transmit the revelation of the most high god into our family members transmit the revelation of jesus and the price he paid and his present day ministry in the lives of our family members thank you raise out of this house great families impactful families noble families glorious families that will release 
out of those families precious building blocks for building a better society and a new nigeria thank you father because we prayed in jesus name amen please you may be seated in the presence of the lord Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you blessed in the house this morning? Hallelujah. I would like us to give our offerings unto the Lord and also our tithes. In this house, we believe in the pay, in giving of tithes and giving of offering. The Bible says we should bring all your tithes into his storehouse. There may be meat in his house, and then you prove him. If you will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, I have no room to contain. So please, as the offering bars go around, we'd like us to give our offerings and our tithes unto the Lord. Out of the abundance of what he has blessed us with, let us give our offerings and our tithes unto the Lord. I also like us to listen to the phone announcements as the offering bars go around. Discovery service holds this Wednesday. Every Wednesday we come together for a discovery service. The time is 6 p.m. So we start about 5:45, and then by uh, I think 6 p.m. So we, we by 7:15 we'll be running up the um, discovery service. The duty pastor for this week is Pastor Yemi Odedoin. Please, we'd like you to notify him of any announcements, testimonies, special song in due time. Also, we want to remind us of our prevailers place. Every Saturday morning, 6.30 a.m., we converge on the Zoom platform to pray together. It has been awesome. It has been wonderful. It has been refreshing all this while. So please, we'd like you to join in this Saturday, 6.30 a.m. on the Zoom platform. Be it. The good thing about it is that whether you are in town or out of town, you can be a part of these corporate prayers. You can be in your bedroom and you are part of this corporate prayer. You can be in your sitting room, you are part of this corporate prayer. You can be, you can be even in the car, driving or moving, a, moving to somewhere or traveling, and you are still part of these um, corporate prayers. We have people joining us from Europe, people joining us from the United Arab Emirates, people joining us from all over the world. So please be a part of this corporate prayer, and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, on the 7th of November, Brother Yusuf Adibiye will be having his father's burial celebration. The father was a Muslim, so they have, he had been buried, but they always do the, uh, the burial rites and burial celebration. So on the 7th of November, he's coming up at a Bado, or your state. So if you are interested in going, we'd like you to put down your names with Pastor Clinton Maxine, who is the welfare pastor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give out of the abundance of the resources you are giving unto us. We have brought this token. We brought our tithes and our offerings. And we ask that your blessings of obedience will be upon everyone who has given. And for every willing heart who did not have to give, we ask for supernatural provisions. We ask that you turn things around to bring the financial blessings upon your people. And let your name be glorified. We give you all the praise and glory. For in Jesus' precious name, we pray. Hallelujah. This morning we'll be having a baby dedication. Normally we have our... Let's, let's put our hands together for the Lord. We are dedicating a baby unto the Lord. Normally we have every last Sunday of the month, we have our birthday celebrations, we have our baby dedication, we have our Thanksgiving services. Um, but because last Sunday was... We didn't have a physical congregation. We had a service 
in, on virtually. That is why we, we made this concession. This couple already put down their names to, to have their baby dedicated, but we had to tell them that um, we have to move it because we didn't have a service physically last Sunday. And that's why we're having it today. So please, let's get informed and let's celebrate with them. Let's rejoice with them. As we stand up, the choir will give out a song. They will come to the front. We will dance and rejoice with them. And pastor will dedicate the baby. Let's rise on our feet, please. The choir. Should I sing for you? So we are dedicating the baby that belongs to, or that we are giving birth to the family of brother and sister Goswill Ebay. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Goswill Ebay and sister Nebet. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord is good. There is nothing he cannot do. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord. So good to us. Hey, there is nothing he cannot do. Oh no, come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord. Oh. Come see the Lord is good. Everybody join us, thank the Lord. Technical, can you have some sound in this mic, please? Technical, we'd like you to tune this mic a little bit up so that the family will be audible when they are talking. Praise the Lord. Brother Goswi, you're welcome. We are glad to have you in his presence. God bless you, increase you, and multiply you in Jesus' name. Sister Nebet, we miss you. We are glad to have you back. <laughs> How was the journey? Oh, please, I guess you have something to tell us. Oga Goswi. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we thank God. It's been God all through. It's been God all the way. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. It's just God all the way. We thank God for his faithfulness. Even when 
I'm not faithful. <laughs> and God remained faithful. So, it's a product of God's mercy. Minus that, I'm nowhere else. So, but I thank God for his mercy. And I also bless God for... The one. I have a notable thing on uh, this special journey. In uh, my children, this is the first one that my wife has to call me. Say, if you know how to pray, begin to pray. When the journey gets more tougher, I remember that night, she, uh, I saw her call, I picked. So, according to, the labor has gone for a very long time because she's not this one that, uh, that is used to long labor. But this one now is a kind of special one. So, she made that comment, uh, honey love, I said, say, if you know how to pray, anybody want to call, call, begin to pray. I've never gotten that message before from her. And I thank God for the whole thing. Uh, if it is only me, I don't know where I will be, but he just got all the way. May his name and his name alone. And I know that all of us, we pray. Because I remember I, I, I called uh, 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 Pastor, Pastor Richard. I never knew that our senior pastor wasn't there. I have to call. <laughs> the line wasn't going. I asked Pastor Richard. He said I can get through on, on WhatsApp. I get Pastor WhatsApp. The, I, I, I was just trying to because... Of what she said, he said, anybody want to call, call. Anybody want to begin to call. So I said, okay. I have, uh, so when I called senior pastor, like, it also, he, he wasn't in the country by then. So I now called Pastor Richard. He said, okay, I should get through on, on what, that, at that midnight, I just, I was up him. I, I, I don't even want to know the time. I just, so, because I just want to call the person I want to call. So, but thank God for the prayers. Thank God for the good wishes. Thank God for our senior pastor, Pastor Richard, and the team of, uh, of, of pastorate and the members. Thank God for your prayers. I really appreciate. But in, 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 in my submission, is, is totally the product of God's mercy. I say, may his name alone be glorified forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Take your glory, King of kings. Take your glory, Lord of lords. Take your glory, King of kings. It belongs. To you, it belongs to you. Oh. Hallelujah, 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 King. Oh, oh hallelujah, hallelujah. I never mean to shed tears, but <laughs> it is well. I just want to return all the glory to him who made it possible all through from the day one of the pregnancy to the ninth month. I want to thank him for his faithfulness, for his mercy. Because he said it's by his mercy that we are not consumed. If I want to look at my faithfulness, I will see that I, I, I don't, my faithfulness, my righteousness is just like a filthy rag before him. I am not righteous. I am not faithful even in serving him. 
Some people might be saying it that I'm faithful, but within me, I know that I'm not faithful. I'm not doing it the way I'm supposed to do it. But I just give God the glory for the strength he gave to me from day one, from the month one to month nine, and to the day of delivering. I just say may his name and a name alone be glorified forever in the name of Jesus. I want to thank the senior pastor. I want to thank Mommy B, the women of his presence. I want to thank the New Wine Choir. I want to thank the men of his presence. I want to thank the pastorate. I want to thank my husband. I want to thank everyone, my neighbors, my friends, my well-wishers. I want to thank God and I return all the glory to him in the name of Jesus. Just as my husband said, I didn't really mean to call him. It was the doctor because me, I was ready for good thing, not bad thing. I was really strong. But then they were like being worried. They said, no, how can you be having con contraction and the baby is not coming forth? That you, the baby is supposed to come. I was just calling on God. I just asked God for strength, that God should give me the strength. All I know that I will not die in this pregnancy. So the doctor and the nurses that were dead at that night, they were like, like called, telling me, why not call your husband? Your husband is not supposed to be here. By then, my sister and my sister-in-law were with me that night. So they said, what about your husband? I said, he's with my other children. So they said, but he's supposed to be here. Why not call him? So I, I was trying to like convince them not to bother him that I would deliver. It's just a matter of time. But they now persisted that I should call, that my sister-in-law should call. So let me just let my husband just hear my voice. So I now said, okay, they should call. Even when my sister-in-law called, he wanted to talk with my husband. They said, no, give it to the wife. Let her use her mouth and talk. So for, by then, I now said, okay, only love. Just anyhow, anybody want to call, call. Just pray that God should see us through. But in everything, I just say, may all glory, may all honor, may all praise, adoration, thanksgiving be ascribed unto his holy name, now and forever in Jesus' name. I also pray, committing those who don't have, that God will remember them for good in this season, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very grateful. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Hallelujah. Thank you. Please, let's welcome our pastor to dedicate the baby. Praise the Lord. The baby has been named Chidera. Uwem Ediu Imon. Sorry, Uwem. Uwem Ediu. Don't mind this Okoro, Okoro man. He's the, one, he's the one who misdirected me. Oemedi Imo. Uh -huh. Jubilee. And the family name is God's Will, Ibe. Um, it seems God will is taking out God's will is taking after my dad because my dad also had boy, boy, boy. But I can assure you you will exceed my dad in Jesus' name. You are not saying amen. <laughs> Chidera Oemedio Mo Jubilee and the family name is God's will be. We really appreciate this family. We thank God for their lives. They've been a blessing to this church. They, they've been a blessing also to uh, me and my family. And we thank God for the hand of God on their lives. Um, right away, we just like to dedicate the young boy to the Lord that's why they brought him so that he may be dedicated to the Lord and his Christ Chidera Oemedi Mo Jubilee uh, God's will Ibe thank you let us pray Father, we thank you for your faithfulness today, for what you have been doing, what you are doing, and what you will continue to do in the lives of um, God's will and Anebet Ibe. We thank you for your hand on their lives, your hand on each of their children, 
And even this new addition, Chidera, OMEDIA more, Jubilee, God's will, Ibe. We're grateful also for this cloud of witnesses who, have, who are here today to witness the dedication of this child and see over time the development into greatness, divine greatness of this child. We're grateful to friends and family who have come to rejoice with them. We're grateful to you, the giver of life and all that pertains to life and godliness. We appreciate you. We thank you for the way you helped Anebet through her pregnancy and in the moment of delivery when she felt her strength was waning. You gave to her strength. You raised people to stand with her. You deployed angels to stand with her to give her strength in her hour of need. And today we come to testify. Today we come to rejoice in your goodness. And today we come to stand with this family as they dedicate Chidera, Uemedi Imo, Jubilee, God's will, Ibe. And I stand as God's oracle today before this cloud of witnesses to dedicate you, Chidera, Uemedi Imo, Jubilee, God's will, Ibe. We dedicate you today in the name of the Father. Amen. We dedicate you today in the name of his son Jesus Amen. we dedicate you today in the name of the Holy Spirit Amen. as we dedicate you to the Lord today nothing will make you depart from the Lord Amen. you will be sanctified in the Lord Amen. you will grow in the knowledge of the Lord Amen. concerning you what God has written is written Amen. and will be established Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. Your life is sourced in God. Your life is powered by God. Your life will be full of the life of God Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And because the life of God permeates your life, you will find wealth. Amen. You will find supplies. Amen. You will find resources. Amen. You will find favor with God and man in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your name is Jubilee. You will be for celebration. Amen. He said. The coming of the Lord Jesus is the declaration of the, the revelation of the Lord's Jubilee. Mm. And so I speak into your life. May you know Jubilee. Amen. May you have Jubilee. Amen. May you walk in Jubilee. Amen. May you not depart from divine jubilee Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Chidera, what God has written concerning you about your growth, about your life, about your destiny, about your future is written and will not be cancelled out, Amen. will not be neutralized. Amen. It will find its full accomplishment Amen. in the name of Jesus. You are full of God's life. And so by his life, you find life. In his life, you enjoy wealth in the name of Jesus. May you ride prosperously because of truth. Because of meekness and righteousness. May your right hand teach you terrific things in righteousness. I speak the blessing of the Lord over your life. Whatever is in your pathway that is sent to harass you, to disturb you, to stop you, such limitations are taken out of the way. Amen. You will overcome limitations. Amen. You will ride on the high places of the earth. Amen. You will suck the breast of kings. Amen. I speak into your life the favor of God. I speak into your life you are a battle axe in the hands of our God. Amen. You will leap over walls. You will run through troops Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray for you also. May you compliment your brothers. May you bring joy to your parents. May you bring joy to your family. May you be a source of good news, good reports for your family in the nation, in the society, and wherever the Lord sends you forth into 
in the name of Jesus. I use you as a point of contact of families, trusting God for the fruits of the womb. The same God who worked miracles for your mom, miracles for your dad. May the same God work miracles for such couples in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We will soon be closing. Just before we close, I would like to recognize those people who are worshiping with us for the very first time on a Sunday morning like this in the International House of His Presence. You are coming for the very first time. We are glad to have you in His presence. And we just want to celebrate you. We want to give you a God bless your hands. Can I see your hands lifted up? Coming for the very first time. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Hands are going on everywhere. Hallelujah. Please just do us one more favor. Can you just be on your feet? As we give you a God bless you hands. Help us to stand up, please. Let's recognize you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, as, as soon as you're handed that sleep, please, you can just take your seats. Take your seats. We celebrate you. We are glad to have you. This is the international house of his presence. God has given us a mandate through his servants to make his presence known and felt throughout the earth. So we engage every godly means to make this happen. That is our mandate, that is our commission, and that is our passion. And so we are glad to have you. Every Sunday morning, we have our kingdom life service. The first service starts by 8.30 and by 9 by by 10 o'clock we are done with the first kingdom life service and the second service starts by 10 15 to about 11 45. so we'd like to have you on every wednesday we have our discovery service by 6 p.m and and about 7 15 we'll be rounding up for that day and also we have what we call the prevalence place it's a prayer time a corporate prayer meeting that we hold every saturday online saturday morning 6 30 a.m to 7.30 a.m. We converge on the Zoom platform to pray fervently and to pray effectively for our nation, for our society, for the church, and for ourselves. And it's been a tremendous time. We'd like you to be a part of this heavenly army. We'd like you to join us in our services. We'd like you to join us in making his presence known and felt throughout the earth. And the Lord will bless you. The Lord will increase you. And the Lord will cause his face to shine on you and give you peace always and by all means in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. One more thing. Immediately after the service, we crave your extra indulgence to just this out of the auditorium. We'll have a reinforcement team that would like to shake hands with you, greet you, and share one or two things with you before you depart. Hallelujah. Let's welcome our pastor as he closes the service. Praise the Lord. I... One of our people in the person of brother Azuka Ahubele was bereaved of his dad yesterday. Um, but um, the uh, dad, I think that's from Ahoda. So he, uh, he called me yesterday morning before Prevela's place. I don't know how I forgot to take the announcement in the first service. So the family should please bear with me. So brother Azuka was bereaved of his dad yesterday. Uh, morning and the dad was quite mature in age he was 94 so I think it will be a celebration of life and then, um, yeah so I'd like us to just reach out to the family let's encourage him and encourage the members of his family brother Azuka and sister Ah and sister Betty Ahubele praise the Lord um, Okay, someone was coming to my mind. I don't know if it's appropriate to share or not, but he's a friend of the house. Maybe you need to also know. Pastor Chris will go. The King's Assembly was also bereaved of his mom, uh, and he was she was 91. Um, so I just got notice of that on Friday. So those of us who know or remember Pastor Chris will go. Uh, King's Assembly. 
Praise the Lord. Let's rise to our feet to close the service. Um, this early morning during my devotion, uh, God put a word in my heart, and I want us to receive that word, appropriate that word, and the blessing of the word will manifest in the course of this month in our lives. Building and blessing. Building and blessing. And that basically God making a promise of a divine blessing in our lives, in our affairs this month. Uh, and by the blessing, it can come in the form of supernatural advantage, divine recommendation, divine elevation, divine remembrance, but blessing, a supernatural enabling of God to bring a supernatural advantage into your life. But you see, a pathway to walk into that blessing, also he said, it talked about building, which is the place of work. Work for you may be putting an effort into your business, putting in an effort to your marriage, putting an effort to your job description at your place of work, uh, making sure you go through process. You are not just expecting miracles. I receive it, I receive it. What will God latch upon in your environment? I said in closing the first service, Psalm 1, he talked about the psalmist. He said, because he delights in the word of God, meditates on it day and night. He said, whatever he does. So, the meditation day and night are the spiritual dynamics, delighting God's word, studying it, spiritual dynamics. But then, he had to do something in the natural. He said in verse 3, whatsoever he does, prospers. So, likewise, this month, I'd like you to go into this month with expectation. As you go into your academics, you go into your business, you go into your family, whatever you do, make room for God that your efforts will not just be defined by your efforts. Something super, something extra, something beyond your efforts will come through the process of your effort. May the Lord bless you. As you build, as you put in the effort, as you walk on your path, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bring supernatural advantage into your space. May the Lord bring supernatural distinction upon your efforts. May you not labor alone. May you not labor in vain. May supernatural from the throne of God come upon your space on the earth. May God distinguish you. May God recommend you. May God bring supernatural advantage into your affairs. May God exempt you from harm. May the blessing of the Lord make you rich, make you prosperous in the name of Jesus. Amen. While men are saying there is casting down in their economy, in their finances, in their opportunities, may you say there is lifting up. May you say there is lifting up. As you walk, as you labor, as you put in effort, and God brings his own effort upon your effort, brings his own work upon your work, brings his own ability upon your ability. May you say, this month, there is lifting up. No matter what you have lost in seasons past, months past, as you walk this month, may you say, there is lifting up in the mighty name of Jesus. And the people say, believe in Amen. Let's take the benediction together, Hebrews chapter 13. Sorry we took so much time today. I'm not sure we've done this since we've started two services. Um, uh, Hebrews chapter 13 from verse 20 to verse 21. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, make me complete in every good work to do his will, walking in me what is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever and the people say Amen. the lord bless you cause his face to shine upon you the lord cause the light of his countenance to be upon you continually grant you peace on every side in the precious name of jesus